I feel it every morning when I wake up. Pain. I assume most people relate, but considering that nothing is actually harming me in that moment, at least not physically, what is this pain and why is it so subjective? According to the International Association for the Study of Pain, pain is an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage, or described in terms of such damage. Okay, great. But how does this then explain the pain we feel when we wake up or get our heart broken? Well, soldiers sometimes don't feel the bullet only minutes after it hit them. To understand this, let's first have a look onto how we detect pain when we are actually physically hurt. To detect potentially harmful or actually harmful stimuli, we have receptors in our skin called nociceptors, which respond to high intensity stimuli. If you would now prick yourself with a needle, please don't actually do this, you would exert a strong mechanical force onto cells, as well as damage other cells. The high pressure activates stretch activated channels on the surface of the nociceptor causing the influx of ions into the cell, activating it, while the chemicals released from the damaged cells bind to other receptors in the nociceptor, also inducing nociceptor activation. For example, if a cell is damaged, it will leak out proteases, proteins that can break down proteins. This protease will then cleave a protein called kininogen to form bradykinin, a molecule which can then bind to BK2 receptors on the nociceptor, which then activates the cell. Also, do you know the feeling of pain when you exercise, the burning soreness of your legs after a workout. This is caused by the accumulation of lactic acid, a molecule produced by muscle cells during exercise that leads to the accumulation of hydrogen ions outside of the cell, which can then bind to the ASIC3-VR1 receptor, leading to the activation of the nociceptor. We have established that all physically harmful stimuli activate nociceptors, but how does this then translate into the pain you feel? The activated nociceptors will release a neurotransmitter, glutamate, onto adjacent nerves, which then also activates, releasing glutamate onto the next cell, activating this and so on, until the signal about the prick into the finger is transmitted via the spinal cord and the thalamus to the pain processing centers of the brain, mainly the primary somatosensory cortex. So far so good, but this still does not explain a problem from earlier, why we can also feel pain when there is no actually harmful stimulus, and why pain is so subjective. One of the possible answers to this question is pain modulation. The changing of pain perception depending on environmental factors. The most important regulator of this pain modulation, the gate of pain perception is thereby thought to be this brain region, the periaqueductal grey matter. Stimulating this region, for example by emotional support, the placebo effect or danger signals, cause the stimulation of other brain regions, called the raphe nuclei which can then release the neurotransmitter serotonin onto nociceptive neurons, with the difference that this time the neurons are not stimulated, such as with glutamate, but that the signal transmission is actually suppressed, closing the pain gate, hence reducing pain perception. Interesting to notice hereby that just as emotional support, the placebo effect or danger signals can close the gate for pain perception, this gate can also be opened by, for example, anxiety, depression or learned safety signals, explaining why pain is so highly subjective. There's another mechanism that can increase the perception of pain, or the perception of pain even without actual tissue damage. Chronic pain is thought to be caused by a phenomenon called central sensitization, or the wind-up phenomenon. If nociceptors are continuously stimulated, such as after injury, these nociceptors also stimulate the nerve cells continuously, causing them to repetitively signal to the brain that pain is occurring. Apart from being super annoying in the short term, this phenomenon also has another effect. In many parts of the nervous system, continuous stimulation of nerve fibers cause the connections between nerve fibers to become stronger, a process called long-term potentiation. While long-term potentiation in the nervous system might sound great at first, because it enables us to learn and have memory, it is not so optimal for pain perception. As the connection between the nerves becomes stronger and stronger, less and less intense stimuli can activate the cascade, leading to a hyperexcitability of the nociceptive neurons. Chronic pain occurs. Well, this sounds horrible, you might say. But I do have some good news. There are ways to reduce this chronic pain, and no, I'm not telling you to just drink more water to get rid of your depression. Acupuncture has actually been shown to reduce pain by causing the release of the molecule adenosine from cells which can then bind to A1R receptors, also suppressing pain perception. And if nothing else helps anymore, opioids are very effective in reducing pain perception by binding to opioid receptors in the nociceptive neurons, preventing the release of glutamate onto other nerve cells, hence preventing the transmission of the pain signal. This also explains why the soldier doesn't feel the pain of the bullet. The fight-or-flight response of the body, which is initiated in high-stress or dangerous situations, causes the release of natural endorphins, a type of opioid that can then act in the same way 
as the opioid drugs, decreasing pain perception. So well, so good. But all this still doesn't explain why your heart feels like it was burning the last time your situationship taught you that they are not ready for relationship. And sadly, even science can't answer this question completely yet. However, studies were able to use brain imaging techniques to show that brain activity during a heartbreak is also increased in brain regions involved with pain perception and pain regulation, including the insular cortex and a large area of the anterior cingulate, explaining why strong emotional responses can actually feel like physical pain. Overall, I think that the current definition of pain is too oversimplified, as it excludes the highly subjective and psychological nature of pain. So, for the sake of science, why do we not go ahead and expand the definition of pain to an unpleasant, highly subjective and variable sensory and or emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage or described in terms of such damage?